Hey y'all, it's Trish. We would like to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video, and we're going to talk more about that in just a few minutes, but for now, let's jump right in. For this project, we're going to use two of the foam cones that I got from the Dollar Tree, some rose trim that I got from Hobby Lobby. I did go ahead and cut this into individual strips, some bead trim that I got from Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off, a piece of this old curtain that I got from Goodwill Outlet, but you can use any fabric. Some lace from that curtain, but you can use any lace. A piece of this crochet tablecloth that I got from Goodwill Outlet. A piece of cardstock. Some super glue fix all adhesive. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I did was cut my cardstock, and I'm going to make two cones to go on top of my trees to make them more pointed. I just roll it up and seal it with some hot glue, then trim off the end and glue it to the top of my cones. I did this with both of them. Now I'm going to take those rose strips and I'm just going to glue them around my cone. Now the first section I did cut it as two that were already together, but for the rest of these I cut them down into individual strips. This helps because of the way the cone narrows as it goes up. I just kept gluing these all the way up, giving it just a few seconds so my glue doesn't melt my cone. And then when I get to the top, I trimmed off one of those roses, glued it to the top, and then put on my last strip, and this tree was finished. Now we're going to start our second tree. I'm going to use a piece of this old curtain, but it's really just muslin. And I trimmed it up so that I knew that it would fit on there. And now I'm just going to glue one edge of it, roll it around, and then I trim it up and glue down those edges. You can use any fabric for this. I was just wanting to cover the foam. Once I get it glued down, I trim it up and I also trim off that bottom to make it flat. Now I'm just going to use my hot glue and seal down those edges so my fabric doesn't move around. Now I have already cut off a piece of that crochet tablecloth. I love this. I think it's so pretty. And I'm just going to glue it down around my tree. Now this has a bunch of little jagged edges when you trim it up because it is crochet. So I just kind of piece them around, trim it up as I need to. I just want this to fit around my tree. Now you could use an old doily. You can use pretty much anything on this and you don't even have to use a solid piece. You could, you know, just put pieces on it instead of covering it completely. I just wanted mine to be covered. So we're just going to keep, you know, gluing it down, trimming it up to make it fit, and then sealing down those edges. Now I'm going to take that piece of lace that I took off that curtain, and I put a strip of glue right down the edge of it, and then I wrap it around the bottom, and this is going to make kind of like a little tree skirt on the bottom of my tree. I took a piece of that pearl garland or pearl bead trim, I guess is what you call it. I get it over in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. And when it's on sale for 50% off every other week, it's only $1.50 a roll, which I think is just outstanding. I had already cut off a piece of this and I'm just using hot glue on it and wrapping it around my tree until I get to the bottom and then we will seal that off. Now I'm going to use another piece. This one's a little bit different and I'm going to glue it right around the top of my lace at the bottom of the tree and this project will be finished. And there's our completed project. I love these. They are so simple and so shabby chic. I'm loving all these little trees that I'm putting together and I can't wait to make a little vignette for them in my office come Christmas. I think that this lace one is probably my favorite one so far. You guys tell me what you think. Today we are excited to be co-hosting the monthly Sunday Fun Day Challenge hosted by Johnny and Diane over at Deco Easy. If you haven't heard of Yanni and Diane, we hope that you will go check them out. We will have a link to their channel in the description box below. Make sure you tell them we sent you over. We will put a link to the playlist in the description box as well. When you finish our video, 
Go over and check out all of the other amazing creators and their Sunday Fun Day projects. If you are new and coming over from the playlist, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release four videos each week. We're sure you can find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an 11 by 14 canvas. I got mine at Ollie's, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, even Walmart. And if you want to go a little bit smaller, you could use one of the canvases from the Dollar Tree. This design that I made in Cricut Design Space and cut out using the glitter iron-on vinyl. Some Waverly chalk paint in ivory and ballet slipper pink. A D-ring hanger and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I also used some super glue fix all adhesive. I was looking on the Kirkland's website and I came across this little have yourself a merry little Christmas sign and I thought it would be adorable in my studio this Christmas. But I've told you guys that I'm gonna be decorating in pink. So I thought why not design this and do it ourselves so that we can have the color we want and in the process I even saved a little bit of money. Now this is on sale for 50% off but I have less than five dollars in mine. The first thing I did was go to Cricut Design Space and I go over to Shapes and get a square. I'm going to unlock it down there in the corner and then I make it the dimensions of my canvas. Now I'm going to go back to Shapes and get another square and I make it a half an inch. That first square is just going to be like my scale, so I know how my pattern is going to fit in it. Once I get my little square, half an inch, the way I want it, I copy and then I paste it seven times so that I can line it up. Then I copy and paste that and line it up under it, and then I go and delete every other one, and this starts my checkerboard pattern. Then I just group it together, copy, paste, until I get it the size that I want it. Now I'm going to go over to text and I type in Mary and then I go up to the Cricut fonts and I choose Vintage Curveball for Mary and for Christmas. I'm just going to resize that. Now I'm going to type in Have Yourself A and I go back up to my fonts and I choose Linotype Aparto Calm Semi Bold. I think that's how you say it. Y'all, I'll put a link to it down below because I know I probably just massacred it. Then I click on the little curve button up there at the top and I curve that text so it fits around my Mary and then I type in little and I just adjust everything and weld it together and tell it to make. Now we're just going to go over to our Cricut Maker and I click on that little flashing button and watch it go. Once our design is cut out, I use my little tool and I weed it out and this weeded so easily. I love Cricut Vinyl for this reason. I've used some of the cheaper ones, but not all of them weed easily. Now I'm going to take that canvas and I want to remove the canvas from the frame. Now, I did not notice when I bought this that this was stapled on the sides of the frame instead of on the back. And yeah, it kind of messed things up trying to take them out. What I ended up doing was taking my little um, True Control knife that I got from Cricut and I just kind of go around the edges of my canvas and cut it off. And then once I get it cut off, I'm going to remove the little pieces that's on the side. And I took the frame out to the shed and I used this little staple puller tool that my husband had and pulled them out. But you can also use like a flathead screwdriver. Now you see it left all these little blemishes in my wood from where I pulled out those staples. So I just grabbed some of the spackling that you get from the Dollar Tree and filled these in and smoothed it out. This frame also has some joints on the edge and those leave an open space. So I filled that in too, just making sure I smoothed it out as much as I could and then I left it all to dry. Now I'm going to take my frame and mark my canvas on the edges. That way I know how to line up my design. And then I take a piece of sandpaper. This is just the sandpaper you get from the Dollar Tree. And I go around and smooth out that spackling. 
Now we're going to paint our frame. I start off using my Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint and give it a really good coat. It really only took one coat. This covered really well. And then while that's drying, I am going to apply my design to my canvas. I lined it up and then I used my Cricut Heat Press and I'm using it at 400 degrees because this is a really heavy duty vinyl and I use it for 30 seconds. I had to split it up into two because it's a really big design and then I flipped it over and did the back as well. Now we'll just let it cool a little bit and then we're going to remove the top tape and our design is on our canvas. Y'all, I love this so much. It's so pretty. <laughs> Now I was going to take a chippy brush and some of my ballet slipper pink and I was going to distress this frame with the pink. But I was not happy with how it was looking so I ended up grabbing a regular brush and just painting it a solid pink and I absolutely love that. Somehow I did not turn on the camera. Y'all I've still got to get used to this setup and it's just my stupidity, but all I did was take my super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree I put some on the frame and then I used a little bit of hot glue for that fast hold and pressed my canvas down on the back And this sealed it in perfectly Now I want to put a hanger so I find the center of my canvas and mark it and then I put my hanger there I take my little pokey tool I got from the Dollar Tree and make a starter hole and then I just use my little screwdriver and the screw that came with it and screw it in and this project is complete. And there's our finished project. I love this. I think it's even prettier than the one from Kirkland's and y'all I know it's because I love pink so much. But it just turned out better than what I had in my head. I cannot wait for December to get here so I can decorate my studio. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use three of the snowflakes I got from Dollar Tree last year. These are all different sizes and you can get them at Walmart, the Dollar Tree, even at Dollar General. Some pre-gathered lace that I had in my stash, but you can use any lace. A few embellishments. I have a cherry blossom flower, one of these little ribbon roses, and this gorgeous piece from Totally Dazzled. They sent us several pieces to try out, and y'all, they are just gorgeous. They also sent us some extras to use for a giveaway, and we'll be announcing that sometime next week, so y'all stay tuned. And my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these little snowflakes and you see that round area in the middle of it. We're going to put some hot glue there and wrap our lace around it. I want it to look kind of like a flower. So I put my hot glue right along the edge of that circle and then I run my lace right around there. Now you may have to crimp it up a little bit, you know, just kind of pinch it in to make it lay flat, but it's really not hard to do. Once you trim it off, you're going to glue down that edge and you have almost like a little flower. Now I'm going to take that little cherry blossom, trim off the back, use a little bit of hot glue right in the center, and there we have one already. These are so simple. We're going to go to our medium sized snowflake and do the same thing. I'm going to put some hot glue right around that circle in the middle and then I put my lace around it making sure that I crimp it up and make it fit into a circle. We'll trim it up and then put a little more hot glue there to seal it. And for this one, we're going to use that pearl and silver piece from Totally Dazzled. Y'all, these are so gorgeous and it just makes this snowflake pop. And there's our second one. Now for our last one, this is the smallest one. We're going to put our hot glue there in the center and we're going to pinch our lace down around it. This one was a little trickier because you're wanting it to lay flat. We'll trim it off and seal it down. And then for this one, I'm going to take one of those little rosettes um, from that trim from Hobby Lobby, put a little glue on the back and put it right in the center. And there's our completed set. I think these are so pretty and so girly. I'm definitely going to be making some more to go on my shabby chic tree this year. And I'm really planning to use some of those totally dazzled stones. Those are gorgeous. I can't wait to give a set away to one of you. 
thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these American flower sack towels that I got from Walmart in the craft section. These are also called tea towels. And some Cricut Everyday Iron-On Vinyl in the color black. So you guys know that I am going to be decorating my office in the pink shabby chic style for Christmas. But my husband prefers a more traditional or neutral in the rest of the house. I love to put towels on my oven door, so I thought, why not make one? I grabbed one of the tea towels from Walmart, and then I came to Cricut Design Space and go over to Images and type in Christmas, and I found this subway art that I absolutely love. I bring it into Cricut Design Space, and then I just pull that little arrow at the bottom and make it bigger and tell it to make it. Make sure that you mirror this though, because it is an iron-on. Now I'm just gonna go over to my Cricut Maker and I click the little flashing button and watch it go. Now we're just going to weed this out. I was afraid this was gonna be a nightmare to weed because there's so many letters, but it really wasn't bad at all. This vinyl is such a good, um, good vinyl for weeding that it just pulled right off now it took about five minutes because i had to go into all of these little letters and pull out the centers but it did not give me any issues whatsoever now i'm just going to take my tea towel and i did find the center and then i put my design right in the center of my tea towel and i grabbed my cricut heat press and put it on there at 375 for 30 seconds. I did have to split this into two because it's a rather large design, but guys, you don't have to have a Cricut heat press to do this. You can also do it with a regular iron if you don't have one. Once I got the front done, I flipped it over and I did the back the same way. Two sections at 375 for 30 seconds. Now we're just gonna flip it back over, let it cool and peel it off and there it is. I think this is so pretty. I thought it still needed a little something extra though. So I took some washi tape and I taped off the bottom of it. And then I go up just a little bit and put another piece. And this is going to give me a stripe. I was going to use my jot marker here. I thought a permanent marker would work fine for this, but it just wasn't taking as well as I wanted it to. So I ended up outlining my stripe using my marker and then I changed over to some black acrylic paint and painted it in. Now I'm sure this is going to be fine. I did not have any fabric paint to do this so I'll just wash it by hand to make sure that it doesn't bleed all over the place. I painted in my stripe and let it dry. We peel that off and this project is finished. And there's my towel. Y'all, I love this. I think this subway art is so pretty, and it's just the right amount of Christmas for my kitchen. I like to keep it nice and neutral in there. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all, and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!